Jupiter, or Jupiter in Latin, Zeus or Zdeus in Ancient Greek. This god is the personification of the largest planet in the solar system. Eleven Earths could be strung along its diameter. But perhaps even more spectacular than this gas giant are its four planetary moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. But why are these the names of the four greatest Jovian satellites? What are the mythological origins of these names and how are they pronounced in Latin in Ancient Greek? Let's find out together. I'm Luke and this is Polymathy. Io was a princess from Argos. That's the city Agamemnon ruled, like we talked about in the video on the names of the great heroes. And she was an ancestor to famous heroes like Hercules and Perseus. Jupiter Zeus wanted to sleep with Io, so to deceive his sister wife, Juno Hera, he turned Io into a cow. This didn't work though, and Juno took Io the cow and charged Argus, the thousand-eyed god, with guarding her from Jupiter. Jupiter kills Argus and eventually gets his way with Io. In ancient Greek, her name is Io. Note the pitch accent. I'll be using the classical Attic pronunciation of ancient Greek in this video. In Latin, it's Io. Now this planet, and remember I use the geophysical definition of a planet like other planetary scientists, where large moons are also planets in their own right, this is the most active volcanic body in the whole solar system. Its glorious plumes shooting hundreds of kilometers into space from its black volcanoes. Now how much energy is in these cryovolcanic explosions? Something that Isaac Newton showed the world is that virtually every such problem is solvable if we reduce the parameters to measurable and predictable variables. What would some of the variables be in this problem? Well, we have the mass of the ejecta from the volcano, the acceleration of gravity at Io's surface being 1.789 meters per second squared, which is just about 18% Earth gravity, and the 300 kilometer altitude of the volcanic plume, and atmosphere is negligible. Can you figure out how to solve it? Well, if you can't, then guess what? You'll be able to soon if you sign up for Brilliant, which teaches you how to understand basic physics concepts like this kinematics problem and much, much more. Everything you need to learn from basic geometry, arithmetic, algebra, even calculus and linear algebra, as well as in-depth and fascinating science concepts in physics and chemistry and engineering. Don't forget computer programming. You need that to program the robots. The 21st century is a new frontier of possibilities for all people all over the world to partake in the most amazing adventure in the history of our species, the exploration of the solar system, from the engineers at home to the science robots they send to distant worlds to the boots on the ground of our planetary neighborhood. But to be part of this revolution, you need to know your science and math and computer skills too. And even for the observers of these miracles, it behooves us all to gain basic science literacy in order to fathom the wonders revealed to us in our galactic backyard. So sign up today at brilliant.org slash polymathy for your 30-day free trial plus 20% off the annual membership. Now, while Io is an explosively dynamic world, Europa's planetary surface, by contrast, seems relatively placid, covered entirely by ice. But the striation on its surface belie this tranquil image. Like one giant spherical glacier, Europe's surface is cracking due to the internal heating of a very active planet, something Europa has in common with Io, but at a somewhat reduced intensity. The gravitational stresses of Jupiter's incomparable bulk interacting with the mass of the other Jovian moons, including these two, are what make Io and Europa so magnificent. Io bursting with volcanoes, Europa boiling from the inside, its 100 kilometer ocean possibly teeming with life? The Europa Clipper mission, which launched earlier this year, will arrive in 2030 and hopefully shed more light on this very question. Europa in ancient Greek is Europa, Europa in Latin. Europa was actually a descendant of Ios, who was Europa's great-great-grandmother in mythology. The myth goes that Europa was playing with her other maiden friends, picking flowers, when Jupiter, taken by her beauty, transformed himself into a great white bull. That captivated Europa in turn. A lot of cows in these myths. The young woman got on the bull's back, for no sane reason I can conceive, and the bull god promptly ran into the sea with Europa astride and swam to Crete, where he made her the first queen of the island. 
The ancient Greek name for this exceptional planet is Ganymedes, Ganymedes in Latin. According to mythology, Ganymede was a beautiful youth whom Jupiter abducted while in the form of an eagle and brought him to Olympus to be his personal cupbearer. The constellation Aquarius, or Aquarius in Latin, Hydrokos in ancient Greek, meaning water pourer, was inherited from the Babylonians and later came to be associated with Ganymede and his myth. Now, the planet Ganymede is larger than the planet Mercury and is the largest moon in the solar system. Its surface is cratered, but not an ancient, scarcely weathered surface like that of Luna, Earth's moon, since, like Europa, its outer surface is a layer of thick ice floating, we believe, on an impressive saltwater ocean. Like Europa and Io, the gravitational stresses of the Jovian system generate its internal heating. Amazingly, Ganymede has its own magnetic field, one of a kind among the moons of the solar system. Like the other three planet moons of Jupiter, Callisto is also heated internally through the same mechanism, but less than the other three. In fact, just looking at the surfaces of the four major Galilean moons, named after Galileo Galilei, who famously discovered the new planets, revolutionizing our understanding of the universe, and categorically disproving the geocentric model, we see the effects of the world's proximity to Jupiter and being encircled by other large moons. Io's surface is volcanically turbulent, with virtually no impact craters. Europa's is barely cratered and quite young. Ganymede's is cratered more, and Callisto most cratered of all, sporting the oldest surface of the four, although it probably has a subsurface ocean too. In mythology, Callisto in ancient Greek, Callisto in Latin, was a nymph in the entourage of Artemis, or Diana, all of whom, like their patron goddess, had taken a vow of celibacy. But Jupiter seduced her, and when Diana discovered her pregnancy, she turned Callisto into a bear. In another version of the myth, no, there's no single authoritative version of the Greco-Roman mythology, different authors like Homer, Hesiod, and Ovid, riffing on the stories in their own original ways, once Callisto was expelled from the group by Diana and had given birth to a son named Arcas, Juno, vengeful for her husband brother's transgression, turned Callisto into a bear. Her son Arcas eventually grew up to be a hunter, and one day, when he was out hunting, he came upon his mother, who was still a bear and nearly killed her. But Jupiter saved them at the last minute and turned them into the constellations Ursa Major, Ursa Major in Latin, meaning the greater bear, the larger bear, and He Megale Arctos in ancient Greek, the big she-bear, and the child became Ursa Minor, Ursa Minor, He Micra Arctos, the little she-bear, or the smaller bear. Greek mythology is insane, isn't it? But even more insane are these Jovian satellites. Thus, the largest of the planets in our solar system has circling it four of the most amazing planets we've ever explored. But these are only four among 95 of Jupiter's moons discovered so far, most with beautiful Greco-Roman names, all worth videos in their own right. The four Galilean moons are just the ones that are considered planets, according to the planetary science experts, including Alan Stern, Philip Metzger, and many other trailblazers and explorers. Hopefully I'll get to talk to them all in the future. So if you'd like to hear more about these scientists, as well as the 90 plus moons of Jupiter, along with the other planets in the solar system, oh, they're just so amazing, each and every one and the mythological origin of their names, let me know in the comments. Thanks. Gratias wobisago karin humine ko kai erroste walete.